In the previous video, we have talked about supervised learning and mentioned the distinction of binary classification and multi-label classification. As a brief recap, binary classification allows us to classify either true or false. For example, whether a specific animal, such as a cat, appears in an image or not. On the other hand, if we have a variety of different animals and we want to classify which animal is present in the picture, we need more than just true or false. This setting of predicting multiple classes or labels is called multi-label classification. But why do we need to make this differentiation? Well, some algorithms are only able to predict the binary setting, for example the support vector machine, which we will cover in a later module. But does that mean we cannot use the algorithm to solve the multi-label classification task? Luckily for us, we can still solve multi-label classification with a little trick. For simplicity of this video, we will consider a classifier that tries to separate our data points using only a single straight line. This makes it such that our model is only able to classify a binary setting. Now, how do we use this model to solve the multi-label classification? There exist two options that we can follow. One versus rest, or also called one versus all, and one versus one. Let's start with one versus rest. Let's again consider three classes, dogs, birds, and cats. As we can only classify true or false, we now split the task into multiple subtasks where we try to predict a single class each. For example, we train a model to predict whether our data point is a dog or not. The or not part refers to the rest in one versus rest. But what about the other classes, you might wonder? Excellent point! All we have to do is to train a classifier for each class. So in our case, we will train three different classifiers, where each of them predicts whether a data point belongs to the desired class or to the rest. We design our model in such a way that we get the probability or likelihood as output for the data point to belong to the respective class. And once we predict the probability for each class, using all of the three different classifiers, we can then simply take the highest probability and predict this as our final class. Rather simple, isn't it? Now, I have mentioned that it comes with a downside, and this might be quite obvious to you already. Instead of having to train just a single classifier, we need to train as many classifiers as we have classes. This can become quite inefficient and time and space consuming the more classes we have and the bigger our dataset is. Another method that can be used is the so-called one versus one method. This method gives us a bit more insight as we will compare each class with every single other one individually. As the name suggests, this is done by comparing all possible pairs of classes. So, in our example, this would be dog versus bird, dogs versus cat, and cat versus bird. Once again, this results in having three different classifiers to train. But if we consider four classes, this would already mean that we have to train six different models. And the more classes we consider, the more and more models we will have to train. But enough about the negative comments. How do we use this approach to get to our final prediction? Well, there are possibilities. Either we use our models as some sort of ensemble, where each classifier predicts a class label, and in the end we take the class with the most predictions for our final output, so basically majority voting. The other possibility is once again to use probabilities for each class prediction. And after getting the output for all different models, we just sum up the probabilities for each respective class and, again, take the class with the highest probability. And that's it! No more magic involved! To sum up, we can take a model that is able to solve the binary classification task and make it work for multi-label classification as well. This can be done either by using the one versus the rest or one versus one approach. While the one versus one approach provides more details, we will also have to train more individual models compared to the one versus rest approach. So once again, both approaches are valid to use and you will have to decide what fits best for your use case.